You're listening to Homeschool Unrefined. I'm Marin, And I'm Angela. Let's encourage each other, laugh, and get real about homeschool. Welcome to the podcast where we keep homeschool simple, real, and fun. You've got episode 82, Nature Series, How to Raise a Wild Child, chapters 6 through 8. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Homeschool Unrefined. We're so glad you're here. Thank you for coming back and hanging out with us this summer. Um, We are just really enjoying this book that we're reading and our our laid back summer mode episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Loving it. Yep. Uh, And we just want to say a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you are interested in becoming a Patreon supporter and getting extra episodes, you can go to patreon.com slash homeschool unrefined. Mm-hmm. So, uh, a f- couple weeks ago, we did a throwback yeah. episode. What we don't yes. do. Yes. It's a listener favorite. One of our favorites. Yeah. It's ours and a listener favorite. Uh-huh. Yes. And so, we started thinking about all these other things that we don't do. I know. And we thought we'd let's talk about them. Yeah, I know. I was thinking we should do another episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it's funny. Sometimes I'm like, I can't think of anything. I don't know. But then, once I get mm-hmm. going... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think of a lot of things I don't do anymore. Yeah. Yep. And don't you think, I am so glad I'm not doing those things because I can do other things. It just things. frees me up yeah. to do the things I, that are really important to me. Yeah. So good. Yeah. And not only that, I have realized too that those things uh, that I don't do make it possible for my kids to really understand that they're part of this family. They're part of the family. And- yeah. They're part of the responsibility of yes. doing these things. It's, yes. It cannot be just me. It's not only up to mom. Right. And part of this homeschooling journey is like teaching, teaching them. our kids that. Yeah. 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 So I think that was one of my biggest fears when we started homeschooling was that like I was going to be doing all the stuff. I've just been, you know, cooking and cleaning all day long. Yeah. and Because mm-hmm. you could be. Easy, you could be. It can easily get that way. Easily. Yeah. Yes. So I love not doing everything. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so have you thought of other things you're not doing? Well, I, I I, don't think I've mentioned this on the podcast, but a big thing that I don't do that I it completely slipped my mind mm-hmm. is I don't wash my hair. Wow. Very often. That's kind of a very big one. often. <laughs> I, now I have okay, to add okay. the, just the thing very often on the end because I actually, well, for a while I just didn't wash it, <laughs> which is, yeah. I don't know, Ever. I kind yeah. of. I don't know how I pulled that off. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't pull it off. We'll just say that. I didn't pull it off. It looked kind of, it looked, it had better, it seemed better days, but I just okay. didn't care. <laughs> Can you define not washing your hair? <laughs> well, okay. So right now I, I wash every seven to 10 days. Hey, which, that is a sweet schedule. <laughs> <laughs> sweet schedule. I know because I was reali- I realized if you take a shower every day and do your hair, I mean, that is. That's a lot of energy you're putting into that your takes hair. A lot of your time yeah. and energy. And I have thick hair. Mm. I have thick hair. I can't. Oh my I goodness. don't know. It's so I've discovered that I got to keep it a little longer, and that's yeah. not because I, you know, love the way that looks or anything. But I then it's easy for me to put up or right. I don't know, and I feel like I can get away with not washing it as much when it's longer. <sighs> really. Yeah. Why is that? Well, I don't know, because there's a lot of it, and it doesn't... Covers it up? Co- covers up <laughs> covers the it all up. <laughs> wow. See, I'm the opposite. Okay, yep. I the know. longer I have... The longer my hair... Because my hair is... I th- I don't know why. Maybe this is why. Because my hair is very fine and thin. Um, Like, the longer my hair gets, the m- and it's very just very oily naturally. Yeah. So the longer it gets, the more oily... It gets. it gets interesting. Yep. Okay, and and then it gets heavier, and yeah, it just yeah. pff, looks dead. It looks <laughs> gross and dead. So I have to keep my hair pretty short. Yeah, in order to keep it have like keep the oil under control. Yeah, that makes sense. I get that. <sighs> it's, yeah, sorry. It's kind of a pain, but yeah. So yeah, so I'm like on a every seven to ten days, which is so nice because. I don't shower in the morning. I mean, it like eliminated the shower in the morning. I take a bath at night. That's what. I, that's how I get clean. Take the bath that's at right. night. Yeah. Every night. And you don't, do you, do you get your hair wet when you take a no. bath? You don't. No. Because I, okay, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> do you? 
when you I, take a bath? When I do take a bath, I take Epsom salt baths, yeah, you know? Yeah, me too. Um, For like my neck and stuff. Yeah, and it, it is... It is so therapeutic. Right. I know. But I do have to get my head in there because you it do. is my neck oh, and stuff, you yeah, know, like yeah. I just have to get all the way in oh. pretty much. Yeah. So then I have to wash my hair because oh, that okay. Epsom salt is so I know. thick. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I will put my hair way up and then I'll get like up as high as I can go. Like, yeah. Yeah. My ears. Sure. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. No. So I, so that's how I get clean, but then I just don't, sh- I don't know when I eliminated the morning shower and the yeah. washing my hair routine, that's things got a lot easier for that's me. So liberating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't take a shower in the morning either. I don't oh, like that. Yeah. So I usually I'll take a bath and then a quick shower afterwards to wash out the Epsom salt. Oh, you do? So you have to do And two. that's like maybe every couple, uh, three days, two really? or three days maybe. Yeah. Okay. Which is great for me. Yeah. That's like, that's like progress for me. Yeah. Because I used to have to wash my hair every single day. Right. Right. Otherwise it looked like it was wet. <laughs> that's how oily it got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember, I think you did talk me into doing this um, baking soda. Yeah. The baking soda wash. And vinegar. Yeah. I did that for months. Yeah. Trying to train my hair not to make it so oily, you know? Yeah. Because when you, when you wash your hair more. It makes more oil. Right. Right. Because you strip the so oils. Tr- yeah. You strip the oils and then it thinks it has to make a whole bunch more. Right. Yeah. So uh, for months, I just walked around with this gross <laughs> hair. <laughs> it was so gross. Yeah. But yeah. it never worked. It did Everybody's not, hair is different. did not catch on. I'm lucky My hair. that I can get away with it. Yeah. I are. think. I mean, you know. I Well, by the end of the seven to ten days, it looks bad. I mean, it looks mm. bad. But I just, <laughs> I also don't care. And I just put it up in a high point I, I, I don't, don't i don't think your hair ever looks bad oh thank you ever <laughs> i've never noticed your hair really? looking bad ever 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 oh nope. okay all right thank you <laughs> um how about you what else are well, you noticing that you don't do i mean i which is just today i just realized oh i never clean out my pantry yeah <laughs> uh and that's and we came home from a little a little trip and our pantry smelled so bad smelled and I was like, yeah, it smelled bad. Like something was getting, getting yucky. Moldy, gross. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, not cleaning it. I'm not doing it. And someone's it was kind of, it. it was a holdout. It. <laughs> it was a holdout for a few days. A showdown. St- <laughs> yeah. yeah. A showdown. A showdown, holdout. I, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. one of those yeah. cowboy turns. Yeah. Um, and so just finally today, uh, they all decided to work together. Ooh, the kids? The kids. Yeah. What? Well, three three of the kids all decided to work together to get paid. I mean, you know, I told them if you if you clean it, oh, you it'll did. be like okay. this extra chart. I'll give you money for it. So they all decided to clean it out wow. today. Nice, right before this, right before this. Yeah, <laughs> and it was so gross. It was potatoes that oh, had mm-hmm. been sitting yeah, there. For those a while. can smell. Yep. yep, they were pretty bad. <laughs> That's funny. I don't clean my pantry out either, and I because I decided I'm not the one messing it up. It's true. I put stuff back in there neatly <laughs> every time and somebody else messes it up. Good for you. Yes. So you do. I don't know. Somebody else is going to have to do it. And my daughter who bakes a lot is the one who yeah. uses it the most and messes it up the most. So I usually oh, yeah. just have her do it. But it'll set messy, sit messy for a long time. I can be such a sucker with that because I feel like my one of my nine-year-olds really likes to cook too yeah and I just feel like she's not at this point in in her development where she's like good <laughs> at cleaning up like, you know like she just yeah no she thinks I know. of the thing and she does it and she I know she needs to grow and yeah. learn yeah um but I can be such a sucker about cleaning stuff up for her you'll do it for her I can't do it I but that's something I have to work on this is a skill people not doing things yeah because this is a skill if she's old enough to make a meal. To make it. I know. She can clean it up. Exactly. Now, there has to be some patience with that or, you know, like yeah. some grace where it's like, okay, it wasn't great, but I'm not going <laughs> to. Right. Like, she can do some I'm... of it. She can do it her right. way. Right. 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 <laughs> I, I, when so I my daughter asks to do it, I'm like, yeah, you can bake or cook. Yeah. Remember, yep. you're going to have to clean up. Yeah. Yeah. And all the things that's, that's going to part of it. So do you have the time for that or the energy for that? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's so good. But she's I'm, older than yours. Yeah. 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 But I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. So let's move on. We are going to be reading or talking about chapter six through eight today of how to raise a wild child. I'm so excited to talk about this. I know. Um, because it goes through each of the childhood developments. Right. The- Early childhood, middle childhood, and adolescence. Yes. These were great chapters. I really liked. I listened. I, I listened and then read. And I wanted to say up front, if you're not reading the book, it's okay. You can just still yep. listen along with us and you don't have to read it. But it's really good. Definitely. Yeah. So chapter six is all about young kids. Like, yep. he, I think he said like around ages two to six. I think so. Yep. I think you yeah. read about that. So, um and he's just he's just talking about different things you can do with the ages and or more like bigger picture why it's important yeah at the different ages yes so good and i liked this this chapter was called the playful scientist oh yeah which i think is the perfect description of a child mm-hmm. this age in nature right because they really are scientists oh yeah he made a case for that and i was oh, like yeah. he is so right Yes. So yeah, right. He said, um, okay, I'll just read this part. Go for it. Uh, much of youngsters thinking turns out to be surprisingly scientific. Preschoolers mm-hmm. learn from statistics and make accurate inferences about cause and effect. They construct theories of the world around them and they readily generate hypotheses and test them by conducting exper- experiments. No, really. That's what they do. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, and that, I've, I've seen it. Yeah, and that just reminded me, I think sometimes we make science harder than it needs to be. And we talked yeah. about this with Jenny, our friend Jenny, when we did Science with Jenny way back in episode 10. Everybody needs to go back and listen to that episode, too. <laughs> and she talked about how to make it simple and that really mm-hmm. it's more about like the conversations you're having because we are already, you know, scientists. We exactly. are doing these types yes. of things all day long. It's just naming it. And I feel like this is just a, a, an example of learning in general. We sometimes overcomplicate it for our yeah. kids. Yeah. They're ready for th- this stage <laughs> yeah. where, they, where they just try things out and they learn from trying things out. Mm-hmm. And then we feel like we have to teach them things for a half an hour. <laughs> yeah. You know, or whatever. And it's just, that's not the case. They learn by doing. Right. And playing was a, such a huge part of this chapter. And I oh, loved that. Yes. yes. Um, playing is work right. for children. Right. And he said, well, he's quoting Albert Einstein. Play is yep. the highest form of research. Yes. Yep. Yep. So, um, yeah, he talks more. I can read more about Oh, do it. It's so good. Okay. You've seen it dozens of times. A child fiddling endlessly with some object, maybe a ballpoint pen or a rock, manipulating it to test its properties. Experimental observations might include scratching, rubbing, hitting, kicking, throwing, and licking. Mm -hmm. In the same vein, (laughs) making a sandcastle is a grand experiment in physics. How high can you make the sand tower before it collapses? What happens if you make the walls thicker or thinner or add more or less water? Children observe closely, make adjustments, innovate, and learn from others around them. We are natural-born scientists, it seems, generating observations and experimenting with the world to better understand it. Yeah, that is so good. So good. And I think this is a lesson for all of us. And he talks about how we um, need to remember that uh, we have to learn from our kids in these ways. Mm. We have to learn from our kids. We do this too as adults. We just do it in a different way. And we have Mm -hmm. to be able to get out there and be playful and do the things we love to do because that's how we learn. Right. Too. So I just loved that. Right. So good. Um, I also loved uh, when Scott Sampson, I don't know if we we named him yet. Scott Sampson. (laughs) The author. author. (laughs) Yep. Um, I loved how he talked about the spotlight spotlight consciousness as opposed to uh the what was it the lantern oh yeah Mm -hmm. lantern so a spotlight you know learning is like when you're focused on one thing and you're just learning about that one thing Mm -hmm. and he said but more often kids this age have a lantern consciousness where they are they are learning an abundant number of things all at once they're taking in so much around them Mm -hmm. and I think we as adults often think of that as 
a negative thing. They right. can't focus. They aren't sitting still. They aren't doing the one thing I'm asking them to do. Well, mm-hmm. that's because they their scope is so much larger than ours. Mm. They're learning so much all at once and they're making connections between all of those things. Right. Just because they're, they're doing is amazing. Just because they're not focused on that one thing at that moment doesn't mean that they're not learning a lot about right. lots of different things. I love that um, illustration, a spotlight versus a lantern. Right. And he's, he said like this, for an adult, it would be like, it's like being in love in Paris for the first time after you've had three double espressos. <laughs> you know, you are just high on life yep. and you want to take in everything because it's just all the best. Right. Right. <laughs> everything is amazing all the time. Right. <laughs> right. And you do not want to dampen that in your kids. Right. Dampen that excitement. Right. I also loved this part where um, he talks about how um, humans are like butterflies with very, very different growth stages. Um, and each stage is highly successful in their mm. own way. Yeah. Um, and so w- that's how we kind of have to think about, you know, our kids. They're in, you know, they're in a very different stage than we are. And it looks uh, like it's not, they're not being su- successful in so many ways. And yet in their own stage, they are being very successful and learning so many things. And they look like a butterfly. They're flitting around from, you know, different thing to different thing to different thing all, you know, all day long. Um, and we're not doing that. And so we have to just make sure that we we're giving them the proper space and time um, to and kind of respect to, to do that work mm-hmm. that they're doing. Yes. Yes. Because it's not going to look like what it would look like for us. Right. Right. Exactly. And we can't think of that. We can't think of children um, as just inefficient or you mm. know insufficient adults yeah. they're just you know we can't think of them like that right they're doing very good work exactly where they're supposed to be right right now right yeah he goes into he talks a lot about play and the importance of play um mm-hmm. and all the benefits how there's he calls it bodily benefits yes. you know benefits to your body benefits socially um and but then he talk. I love the part when he talks about nature play. Oh yeah, and he talks about how neat in nature there are a lot of loose parts, sticks, leaves, rocks. You know, right? There's a lot of there's a, var- a wide variety of loose parts that kids that. then can work with, kind of as art to fit together to do their own play. Right. So he d- he went, I don't know if it was in this chapter, I think it was, when he talks about like a playground, like a normal playground, um, a normal, like a yep. typical playground. A traditional playground. Traditional yeah. playground mm-hmm. where it's like you have, okay, well, I'm going to do the swing and then now I'm going to do the slide and then now right, I'm right. going to do the monkey bars or whatever. Whereas with nature, if you have lots of loose parts around, it's in d- the possibilities are endless and the children are right, constructing right. their own ideas. Yeah, exactly. And I really liked how he, how he talked about like, and I think traditional playgrounds are fine. You know, they have a, they serve a purpose, but like they can, it can become like even a little competitive. There are competitive things Mm -hmm. like I'm going to be the first one down the slide or, um, you know, you can't do this thing because it's too dangerous or whatever. Um, and with nature playgrounds, I loved him talking about nature playgrounds. I want to see more of those. Um, you know, he just talked about each thing has like a gradual degree of difficulty and you just yeah. do whatever works best for you at that thing. So on a boulder, you might go on the small boulders or you might go on the big boulders, but you all get to go on boulders. Yeah. Um, or you might work yeah. your way up and try yeah, one and right. you, oh, no, nope, that one, I'm going to stay here. Whereas, right. like, if it's monkey bars, well, everybody's doing the same monkey bars. And it might be right, right. too hard for a young kid or too easy for an older kid. Right. Yeah. I've always found it so interesting that, like, so many things on playgrounds, like, most kids, like, can't even <laughs> can't even reach some of the things. Yeah. Like, the zip line or the monkey bars. Like, yeah. so many kids can't even can't get there. <laughs> yeah. I know. I've always thought that was funny. But anyway, yeah. So, there's just, like, so many more possibilities and... Um, just, I think kids are using their brain more. Right. Yeah. To use those things. I loved when he talked about these loose, 
what loose were they parts. Loose, loose parts. <laughs> um, and actually, when he was talking about loose parts, I mean, when he was thinking about the best, he was talking about the best toys. And I mean, I always thought of the best toys as like blocks, cars, mm, yeah, um, people, like play people. Yeah. Which those are good too. Those are good. But this even like, I think, takes it a step further where... You know, there aren't cars. You, if you want a car, you make it out of, a, you know, a, yeah, something stick. outside you, yeah. stick or whatever, or rocks or, you know, so you even have to go one step further to make that, make your thing, make your ideas a reality. Right. You talked about how the stick is the number one best toy of all time. Yeah. You know, it was inducted into the National <laughs> Toy Hall of Fame. <laughs> Congratulations, stick. <laughs> yeah, so he's talking about sticks, boxes, yeah. string, cardboard tubes, dirt. Yeah. Your kids are really Love into that. boxes, so. Really into boxes. That is so true. Some of them more than others. Yeah. Some of my kids more than others, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. And and rocks. We do have oh, really? lots of rocks around from all different places that we've been. Yeah. So, and um, rocks have been definitely I have a, my my son is really good at uh, making rock oh, sculptures you yeah know? yeah and he could do that for hours that's awesome that's yeah physics yeah right so great he's I experimenting know. yeah and I think that is just when he when Scott Sampson talks about the EMU experience mentoring and understanding mm-hmm. so much of that happens just in that yeah you know in in the rock sculptures so it's definitely lots of experience getting getting the rocks whatever all that kind of stuff putting them together and then mentoring I mean that's maybe I don't know if that's maybe part of it but getting out there with an adult is so important but also like the understanding is just the last part Mm -hmm. is the last part yeah uh and so I feel like he does get understanding just doing it. Right. So much of what you do in nature, you get the understanding just by doing it. You right. don't need to hear much about right. it. Right. But even that, though, like the understanding um, doesn't need to happen 100% of the time either. Like you don't need to know exactly why everything works or how it works directly. You know right. what I mean? Right. You can just try things out. Just try it out. And yeah. over time, you will learn what you need to learn. Understanding happens, yeah, gradually. And Mm -hmm. understanding happens naturally, I think. When I was reading this chapter, I was thinking, understanding happens so much more naturally when you just go out and do stuff. Yeah. Um, So, like, all the curriculum planning that we do, it's which can be so good. I am not going to undermine that for sure. But it may not be as important as we think it is. Right. Um, Where, you know, really... Um, what we need maybe more is just more experiences. Experiences. Yeah. That's, and play. Trying and doing. Yep. Yeah. And then he says, um, at this point, you may be thinking, yeah, that sounds great, but my kids would rather play inside and play video mm-hmm. games. <laughs> <laughs> and, Which... you know, I have thought that at times too. I mean, yeah. definitely. Definitely my kids would rather do that sometimes. Yeah. For sure. So he says, you need to get creative. You need to do your best to, you need to get out there with them. You need to, Mm -hmm. um, and then get creative when it's older kids. He says, he says he's never, he says younger kids are generally good with getting outside. They are. Yep. But as they get older, they may need some more coaxing and some more coyote skills. And I have to tell you, I just, I think it's a score for me when my kids are even just okay (laughs) with going somewhere, (laughs) you know, they're not complaining about it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's a score. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, he, he is a nature guru. (laughs) So, I mean, I think he has like, um, higher standards. He might, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, he might, I, I agree. It would be great to have my kids like super want to be outside all the time, but even if they're just okay with it, I'm like, I'm really happy about that. (laughs) Definitely. Another objection, common objection he hears from parents is, um, dirt. Mm-hmm. A lot of parents have a problem with dirt and germs, mm-hmm. and they're worried mm-hmm. about that. And so then he makes this case for why it's actually good, why dirt is good. Yeah. Um, because, and there's lots of studies that show, you know, if babies and toddlers and preschoolers get dirty, 
their immune systems are stronger and they're with a, they're able to withhand, withstand um, other illnesses. Right. And he's he may he says you know this is a messy dirty thing. I mean being yep, in nature is. is messy and dirty, and you're just gonna have to be okay with it and not be fearful of the dirt and germs. Right. I thought it was so interesting. I loved when he said, "And be careful of your expressions and body language. Mm. Kids tend to mirror your internal state, whether it's fearful or calm." Yes. I have to, uh, like write that up on my wall somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Because ev- I have to think about how I react to everything, really. I know. Yeah, um, I don't get fearful about outside. dirt, but I get fearful about other things that I know oh, yeah. I pass along. Yeah, other dangerous things. Dangerous. Yeah. I think of when I'm when the kids are outside. Yeah. Like even well, and this this kind of they talk about this. He talks about this in maybe that's the next chapter about um, having more independence. That's yeah. in the next chapter. But I get fearful about that. Oh yeah. That's my fear. Yeah. So that's where my fear comes in. Dirt, I'm not so worried about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But even sometimes I feel like I don't get, I don't, I'm not scared of dirt, but sometimes I'm like, ah, I'd really I'd prefer you right not. now. Yeah. Because we have to be somewhere after this. Yeah. Can you I just don't want to give dirty? you a bath or. Right. Whatever. Yeah. So, and sometimes I just think, well, who's, um, whose schedule are we on? I mean, I just, I think we have to really mm. think about who, um. How is this? How is my schedule that I've set up for today yeah. <laughs> working for my kids? You know, and so maybe right. it's okay if they get dirty. More. Right, right. Okay, and then there was another um, section or little part that he talked about going to get the mail. Yeah. Do you want to talk Which, about that? Cause well, you- I yeah, sure. I mean, I just liked that because um, that was his trickster way of getting his daughter outside. Yeah, and I was thinking. For myself, for our family, I feel like that's our dog. Oh, <laughs> that gets that gets our kids out a yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the dog, the good, the dog needs a walk. Yeah, oh, the dog needs some fresh air. Oh. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, he was saying. Okay, I just have to read this because it's so pretty mm-hmm. about the mail. Because you would yes. think going to get the mail, you would not think that to count that as getting in nature. Right. Um, usually we didn't, so he walked with his daughter to get the mail. Usually we didn't say much, preferring instead to feel the twilight seep into our bodies. Other than feeling her little hand in mine, my favorite part of these mini adventures was sighting animals whose days were just beginning. Swooping Mm -hmm. bats, gorging on an insect smorgasbord, a barn owl heading out for a night of rodent hunting, a gray fox trotting by on the way to who knows where. Oh my gosh. Uh, Yeah. That is so great. They must have had like a long driveway. Yeah, or I think it was, I think he said it was down the block or something. Oh, yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. If I remember right. But yeah, yeah they had to walk away. So it's like a mile or something. Yeah. Um. Okay. <clears throat> should we move on to the next chapter? I think we should. Okay. So this is called The Age of Competence, and it's mm-hmm. um, how to mentor kids during the middle childhood years, which I think he says is around like six or seven to 11 mm-hmm. or 12. Mm hmm. Um, okay, I just Which have to start is with where most of my kids are. Yeah, that's you, that's all your kids <laughs> yeah, are in that, that stage. Is. Yep. Yeah. I have to start with this quote because I don't know why the quotes are grabbing me so much. I um, know. I, they're good. Okay, so Sir David Attenborough, the great naturalist and BBC wildlife presenter, has often been asked, How did you become interested in animals? Yes. And his response is always the same How on earth did you lose your interest in them? Oh my goodness. That almost that almost makes me cry. I know. <laughs> and so then he talks about how kids are just born interested in animals. Yes. Or, you know, bugs or nature. Nature. They're interested. And then at some point, other things take over sometimes. Yeah. Yep. And they don't have to. I know. Yeah. And it's... I feel a lot of pressure to not let that happen to my kids. Oh, yeah. And I have to let that go. Yeah. We don't need more pressure. (laughs) No, because kids pick up on our stress like that, too. So, Mm -hmm. and you know, I just don't need more stress. No, you don't. (laughs) So I can't let that worry me. But it is true. I just want to hold on to this sense of wonder and uh, enjoyment in nature. Right. For as long as I can with my kids. I know because I have a teen now. I have a 13 year old and I'm telling mm-hmm. you, she's always been very interested in nature. I can see it's changing and we'll, we can mm-hmm. talk more about that in the next chapter, 
but it I I I am realizing now that I see that with her that this is uh you know it's a special age and you can't like I I have to keep up what we're already doing otherwise I do feel like they could become interested in other things right other things could become more important oh yeah if totally. I don't emphasize it yeah well like I said even in the young in the in the last chapter I think it's so you know I count it a win when my kids are just okay with going somewhere yeah in yeah. nature and so that's already happening. Yeah, that I know, I know. <laughs> Although if it's if it's not me leading them, then it's better. If they're just going outside because they want to, then it's so much better F- for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. For example, you know, like I think earlier in the, one of the earlier chapters, he said it's just as a mentor, you should be pushing from behind rather than pulling from the front. Mm, and yeah. I just want to keep that in mind because especially at this age, this middle age, uh, middle childhood age, where they are feeling a sense of autonomy. They need that autonomy. So they want to feel less pulled right. than ever. Right. Do not pull me into anything. Yep. But if they are slightly interested in something in nature, then I really want to foster that as yep. much as possible. Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay, so he's talking about this age, their greatest longing is freedom and independence. Yes, exactly. Um, Kids at this stage are compelled to put their newfound abilities to use, sampling new horizons, geographic, social, emotional, and intellectual. Whereas a backyard with a few bushes and some dirt may be plenty wild for a toddler, Mm -hmm. wildness for youngsters in middle childhood might mean navigating an urban creek with forested margins. The previous yearning to remain within the intimate mom and dad bubble is replaced by a hunger to burst out and explore new terrain, often without the accompaniment of grown-ups. Okay, so this is where I feel like <laughs> their need for independence mm-hmm. is just, it's like a no-brainer to do it in nature. Oh, yeah. Right? It's like I mean, the safe way, well, yeah. you know, the safe it's... way to explore. Yeah, exactly. And wherever they get that independence, independence that's what they're going to love. Yeah. Give them independence in nature. They are mm. going to love nature. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what they want the most. Right. So it's still really scary, though. Cause... I know. Because <laughs> oh, how do you do that? Like, I, I mean. Because we've read the research on, we've read the reports on what happens, what can, you know, how a kid can drown in yeah. six inches of water. Oh, yeah. Right? We've, yeah. we've read them all. Yeah. <laughs> right. We, I get worried about that. I get worried about drowning, too. Oh, I don't get worried yeah. about climbing trees. Why is that? Because just know. a broken arm. A broken arm is no big deal. Fixed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's still it's so it's it's hard for me. I mean, we have like a nature area right across the street from our house. And I've never let my kids. I don't want to say never. They have taken the dog in there for a walk. Mm-hmm. with the dog and all three of them and that's good but I don't know I think I worry I about there's lots of people using that space mm-hmm. yeah what if they get lost they don't know it that well it's pretty big well that's where I thought it was so interesting I liked how he said with along with this independence the the power of familiarity of the familiar and the ordinary is not to be underestimated. Mm. So knowing a spot, a space is so important. Yeah. So just continuing to go back to that same spot and then you can give them that independence in right. this very familiar spot. And then it feels very independent and yet right. there's not much that could happen. Right. Like I'm imagining if you had a couple acres of wooded backyard. Yes. Yeah. That would be perfect. Right. Right. Because they could go back there. and. But you do have, I mean, you don't have, it's not your land, but I mean, there's a lot of land around you that's nature-y. Yeah. You it's, mean across, you know. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, lots of places. So, I mean. That's also the- where our dog poops. And so now people are afraid <laughs> to go up there. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> well. Which I should probably just buy them all big boots. <laughs> oh, in your backyard? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just talking about the land around you. That's oh, n- yeah, that's not there's yours. a lot of different spaces. Yeah, around our house. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you could even just say, um, you know, you can go here to that tree or whatever. Yeah. 
you yeah. know like uh, in our neighborhood i my kids just go to the end of the block it's a long block yeah yeah <laughs> they can go to the end of the block or um they can go around the block or yeah. around our around a few blocks if they're with each other and i just I think it's so good and I think they've t- they've come back and said yeah I was a little worried about you know whatever and I just think that's so good that yeah. you were a little worried about that because yeah. Yeah. it's not a very dangerous place right. You're to close be worried enough about to home right to explore yeah so I need to yeah. get better at that um yeah I need to get better at that um I do <laughs> I've always thought about putting those little tiles in my oh. kids pockets you know, it's those? like a, it's like a GPS, you know, like you can tell where it's like you oh. would put it, you would put it on a device if you don't want to lose your device. Right. Oh, okay. But you can also, it's, you can put it on a keychain, or oh. you can, you can put it in your pocket and then you'd at How least is- worst case scenario, you'd be able to go find your kid. Okay. If you haven't seen them for a long time. <laughs> That's interesting. I'm going to look at, I didn't know they made those. Yeah. Cause I'm it's always just like, a do I square. send a phone with them? I know. I know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I haven't, we don't have those, but I've thought of doing that. And it, I guess if it does bring me a sense of security and it allows my kids to have that independence, yeah. it might be worth it. Yeah. Right. So. Um, also, my, my dad or my, uh, my husband has gotten for the kids as his as the father you know like he, I think he's just like also very gets worried about this stuff but he has gotten whistles oh yeah you know he's like if you're gonna go around the neighborhood you gotta bring this whistle okay <laughs> you know, so didn't he get you one too he got me a lot of things yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's gotten me the spray <laughs> some spray a taser lots of things because yeah. I like to go out at night too so. yeah yeah that's good yeah. Okay, so he also talks about how important it is for the adults mm-hmm. to have passions outside Definitely. and then to bring your kids with on your passion. Yeah, that's so good. Doing your passion um, while you're pursuing that passion. So find something that you're interested in, whether it's birding or biking or whatever, and bring right, your kids right. with. And I thought of our friend Emily, who was on our <laughs> yes. show, yeah. Adventuring. Was it oh my gosh. where we adventure? Where we adventure, I think. Where we yep. adventure with Emily Carlson. I think it was uh, episode 60 something or 50. Yeah. Yeah. Um, look it up. She is so good at that. She, she is the guru of that. She's so, <laughs> so inspiring. Yeah. Uh, she has lots of outdoor passions and she, they, she and her husband and they bring their kids with, yeah. to, you know, like... As just like, you know, friends or whatever. They're bringing their kids with um, mountain climbing or yep. hiking or whatever they're doing. The kids are always with. Episode 56. 56. All right. Where we adventure with Emily Carlson. Carlson. And, you know, I think when before they even had kids, they made a pact to do this. They said, yeah. we are not going to stop our lives and our adventures and our, and our passions, you know, because it's very healthy for our kids to go along with us yep. to those things and they are doing it they are yep. they're hiking in they're hiking in the rocky mountains right now i know <laughs> and they rock climb and they kayak i mean that mountain we don't biking. Have, oh yeah 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 lots of mountain biking <laughs> um but that doesn't mean we have to do all right. those no crazy just find your thing whatever right. that is and what's your what's your thing well i was thinking well my thing used to be which it still is but i haven't done it much is mm-hmm. birds watching the mm-hmm. birds and so i try and talk about that when i'm with the kids but i kind of have lost uh like i've forgotten what a lot mm-hmm. of the birds are so i need to brush up on it um so i like well that. remember you don't have to know everything i know i know so that's the thing i just have to notice the birds right. and talk about them yeah and just share your excitement yeah right exactly uh also like going for, i like i like walking in the woods so or yeah. hiking yeah that's great <laughs> yeah how about you well i would say i don't have like a lot of knowledge i mean i i don't have like specific knowledge about a bunch of nature things no, so that's where I, when i read that i was like Ooh. but really that's not the point the point nope. is to just um share my excitement i love hiking yes i love going to the mountains yes love going to the mountains um so I want to do that more. 
I can't do that in Minnesota, but I love, um, I love water. Yeah. So just being near water, I don't need to be in the water necessarily, but I just like, I like experiencing water. Yeah. Yeah. So we, you know, Minnesota borders Lake Superior. So, and I love just being near Lake Superior. It's just vast. Right. And just experiencing that is, is really unique and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I love, and I just like exploring. I just like exploring. Yeah. So one thing he talks about in here is, um, you know, he kind of makes the, we've heard of like helicopter parenting. Mm -hmm. We've heard of tiger. What's it called? Like the tiger mom. (laughs) (laughs) Parenting. And, um, he makes a new category or I think somebody else did. I don't think he did. Somebody else kind of coined it, but he thought it worked well. And he calls it hummingbird parenting. Yes. Michelle Whitaker. Oh, okay. Michelle Whitaker. Yep. Um, and he talks about that is when you are staying physically distant from your kids, mm-hmm. but you're, and so you're letting them explore and solve problems and stuff like that, but you're coming in at moments when they need you or safety is an issue. Yeah. And I really liked that. I really like that too. And yeah. I think, I think I am maybe naturally like that a lot. Oh yeah, have, have felt I kind of feel guilty when I do that sometimes. Mm, why? Or uh, I or I think um, it's just not the norm. I think it's just not the cultural norm to stay away. You mean hands more? off? Yeah, oh. to be hands off. Yeah, more. You know, and I think I've gotten looks <laughs> at playgrounds before where I've been like, no, I'm letting my kid deal with this. Yeah, I'm letting them deal with it. Yeah, if okay. they want help, they can come and ask me for it. But yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that doesn't always go over very well. I don't yeah, think. you're right. Like, especially if your kid is like maybe doing something they shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Which it could be little. It could be <laughs> yeah. a real little thing. But right, right. usually parents step in. Yeah. Yeah. They want it to, you know, they want they want it to be socially comfortable. Yeah. Right. Which I do. I don't blame them. I mean, I, I can see that being a benefit, but I think, so it's good. It was good for me to read this because then yeah. I felt better about myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. And then he talks about family nature clubs. Yeah. Which I loved this because he said, um, okay. He talks about the importance of having other people, not just the parents, but other people be mentors to your child in nature. Yeah. And having other people be along in the experience. And so he said, yeah. one way to do that, if you don't already have a group of friends who can do this with you or family who can do this with you, is to start family nature clubs. Right. Um, and he talks I, about... Yeah, go ahead. He talks about how important that is. And then if you... There's something called the Children and Nature Network. Mm-hmm. Which is like just a network of family nature clubs. Right. And so if you wanted to find one in your area... You could Google that and find one near you. And he talks about so many benefits. There's, um, it it helps fight off the the specter of fear with the safety and numbers. Totally. Just all together. Yep. Um, it offers engaging. This is my favorite. Engaging outdoor activities with minimal effort. Yeah. And planning. You right. just show up. Right. And, and be there. And when there's other kids coming. Yeah. Then my kids want to want to do yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. So we do something similar. We have Adventure Co. We've talked about before. Yeah. And my kids want to go every time. Yeah. If I just said to them, we're going on a nature walk, they Boom. would not want yeah, to. Yeah, I know. No. Totally. But we're going to Adventure Co., which is with all these other people who they like. They're down. They like it. Right. And then, okay, they also allow parents and other caregivers to share their knowledge. So that's where mm. these multiple mentors come in. Like yes. somebody else might know something about this um, remember last time we were, somebody, some parent knew a lot about this thing our kids found. It was, <laughs> it was part of an animal. Our kids found an animal part that was hard to identify. We had a great discussion about it though. Yeah. It, it was really great. Yep. It also just helps you practice those hum- hummingbird parent skills. Yeah. And I think it's great for parents. You just get to hang out with each other. Right. Enjoy yeah. yourself. Enjoy yourselves. Totally. Bring your favorite drink. And then. <laughs> the kids just can go out and have a right. great time. Right. Yes. Okay. So chapter eight 
is about teens or mm-hmm. adolescents. Um, I loved this chapter so much. Yes. I think because I have a 13 year old. Yes. Um, I, I listened first and then I went back and read, um, I just felt really inspired. Yeah. Um, he talks about, okay, so the main thing he says here is that, well, the, the point he makes at the beginning is teens, it's not that they lose their interest in nature. Mm -hmm. It's that being around friends becomes more important. Exactly. And so if you can find ways for them to be in nature with friends together, together with friends, then that that's how you do it rather yeah. than trying to, you know, you know, doing something with just the family isn't going to be as exciting. Right. Which is, I, this is another thing that I think is very countercultural. You don't really see a bunch, you know, you don't see a lot of things where or events where teens can get together in nature. No. I mean, think of schools like recess doesn't even happen. I know for teenagers anymore. Right, they're just inside all day. Right, right. I know it's so sad. Um, so he talks about this is what we kind of alluded to in the last chapter. Wild nature offers amazing settings to undertake daring yet controlled challenges with peers, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and teens tend to be passionate about doing outdoor activities if other teens are present. So, um, yeah. teens need a challenge. They need something daring. They need an adventure. Yep. And nature is the perfect, I mean, it's the natural way to make that happen. Definitely. Yeah. And again, like if you do that in nature, then they're going to just love nature so much more. Right. <laughs> if you right. give them those opportunities. Right. And this is where, you know, that autonomy in the middle child section, it just, this is just, it's just greater. It's they inten- need more, more independence. And they almost need, I liked how he talked about, they almost need to, uh, turn into the leader mm. sometimes they yeah. they can be the leader they can be right. the expert um, and they you know if or if they're going maybe they go with a camp or an overnight thing right where you're just you're not even there at all right yeah he talked a lot about um, organizations like Outward Bound mm-hmm. uh, National Outdoor Leadership School and the Student Conservation Association yeah and I was like sign me up I have, <laughs> I have got to get my daughter involved in this stuff you know. I don't know anything about it but it sounds really cool yeah because sometimes don't you think oh my goodness I need I need to create a group where <laughs> yeah teenagers get together and do all this great stuff oh wait it's there already out there. <laughs> there there is one they do yep. it yeah yep. yeah um and another thing about nature for adolescents is it becomes this deeper thing deeper experience for them it's not just about the five senses senses it's about who they are as people oh yeah and they find they can find connections to their deep sense of self with the uh, you know connecting to the deep sense of place I think he said or something like that where there are so many connections between those two things and they find it right he said it's more about like developing character and less about like naming the plants and animals which I loved. Yeah. <laughs> I love that this is never about us knowing a whole bunch of stuff. Right. Even at the oldest level. Right. Right. Yeah. So helpful to know that. Because that's not, that doesn't last. No. I mean, look at me. I forgot, I've forgotten all the bird names. So. Yeah. And you are, I mean, you, that, you are a biology major. Yeah. Like you yeah. learned a lot of stuff. And yeah. that wasn't like the thing that's that stuck not, with you the most. No. The character. Mm-hmm. character what you're learning about yourself and learning about the world is what sticks yeah exactly yeah I um that. I loved that he talked about how it's never too late yeah um even as a teenager if you get your teenagers out in nature something major can click in them if, mm-hmm. even if they've never been had those right. experiences before ever right yeah because he talked about it as being like um a like a rehab I don't want to say rehab that's not the right word but like a and I don't even want to say punishment but like a consequence Mm -hmm. of some there was an example of some Mm -hmm. kid who I don't know did some committed some crime or something and chose to go into this nature program and how that changed his life yeah yeah Yeah. and now he is a leader yeah right in nature and a nature um organization right which is so exciting um I like how he also talked about um, nature can be kind of a rite of passage. 
Yeah. You can do these things and you just feel <laughs> older. Yeah. You, you yeah. give yourself that credit of being being in this place where you can do those things. Well, yeah. He says, culturally, there are rites mm-hmm. of pas- passage in lots of different cultures and there right. have been throughout history. And we've kind of lost that. And so yeah. kids need to feel like, oh, I'm older now. Yeah. They're kind of missing out on that rite of passage. Right, so they're right. creating things on their own, yes. which can be harmful. You know, like they can be like joining a gang or something mm-hmm. like that to provide a sense of belonging. But um, nature can do that for them. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Yep. I loved that. And a way you can do that is by like going on a big trip with mm-hmm. a teen or mm-hmm. um, going on some big, ad- doing a big adventure. Like yeah. you're, you're older now. We're going to do this great adventure together. Right. Like yeah. I think of in Minnesota, we have the Boundary Waters. Oh, yeah. Which is, is just, a, it's a complete, you can't bring your car in. It's yep. All portaging and walking and, yep. you know, canoeing. Um, and so you could be out there for days without right. any communication with anybody else. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. What so a I great, I mean, I've thought about doing stuff like that with our kids, not mm-hmm. specifically in nature. I've thought about, oh, what big things could we do? To like, now that you're older, we can do this thing. But what a great way to do it. I know. I know. What a great way. I just thought about that too. And then, you know, like I was talking about leadership, I think the power of, uh, he he talked about the power of service. Mm. And I think using, doing that in nature is just so great. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, to, to do service for anyone is really just a gift for yourself in so many ways. Um, and so to do that, in nature somehow is can be so powerful right right all right let's move on to loving this week Maren uh what are you loving this week all right so I am loving an Instagram follow and I mean Mm -hmm. it's really hasn't been just this week I love this I love this follow I've loved it for a long time um it's busy Phillips yep she's an actress lives in Hollywood (laughs) and she is just I think the queen of Instagram stories wow you She'd think so? Epit- I mean, epitome. I really like, I love her Instagram stories too. Yeah. She knows how to do it. She's yeah. the best, I think. <laughs> She's interesting and funny. <laughs> yeah. And um, really, I think, really authentic. She's yeah. Just herself. I love her. I do too. When did I first see her? Was it? Um, well, she we was used- in Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, I think, As a friend, she was just a friend of... She wasn't one of the main ones. She was a friend of Michelle Williams on the yeah. show, you know. And they're friend BFFs of a friend. now. They are, they're BFFs, which we know <laughs> because of the story. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, she's just fun. She shares a lot of her favorite music. Um, she She processes, she's written this book, and she, you know, just stories about her working on this book. I mean, I've been through, we've been through it with her. Yeah. I feel like. <laughs> and so. she has her own show coming up now. A late yeah. night show. Yeah. Cannot wait. I know. I'm curious about when that's starting. I think it's soon. <laughs> I'd like to Hopefully. know. I'd mm-hmm. like to know when that's starting. <laughs> yeah. That's a good yep. one. She's a favorite mm-hmm. of mine too. Yep. She's great. Yeah. How about you, Angela? What are you loving this week? I'm loving a podcast. Great. was not even recommended to me. I just found it. Via wow. Scrolling. <laughs> Yeah, scrolling on an app, a podcast app. Okay, wow. it's called THR Awards Chatter. So mm. it is The Hollywood Reporter. That's mm. THR. I think they have other podcasts, The Hollywood Reporter does, okay. but this is one is called Awards Chatter. And there's a host, Scott Feinberg. Okay. And he just interviews actors and actresses. And wow. they're like maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. And they are... I've. <laughs> I've gone through so many of them because I started off with, um, well, I I listened to Carrie Russell. Oh, nice. Actually, and I like her because we used to watch Felicity. Oh, yeah. And then I went and watched Felicity. You did? (laughs) Because I was like, I got to watch that again. So I watched the first couple of episodes. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's good. It's good, but it's a little slow. I was like. It's the good stuff. It's very dramatic. <laughs> it's very dramatic. Oh my gosh! I really like that show. If you haven't watched Felicity, well, 
<laughs> it's different. It would probably be different from my 41 year old lens. Well, the way she talked about it on the interview, I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, she just had such nostalgia for it. And I was like, oh, I've got to go rewatch that. Did she okay. talk about did she talk about the Americans? Yep. The she talked about the on. Americans. OK. Yeah. Yep. Have you seen that? Yeah. Jeremy and I watched the Americans probably the first two seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Us too. OK. We really? Jeremy mm-hmm. still watches it on its own on oh, his own sometimes. OK. Uh, I, li- I really liked it. But I also realized I don't know what's going on here for like <laughs> at least probably probably 25 percent of what's going on i miss like, i don't get it what's going on <laughs> yeah so totally it's good though okay yeah. um so actually the first one that caught me that i the reason i wanted to listen to this was um he had david schwimmer on Ooh, nice talking about <laughs> the oj Sim- what's that show the oj simpson the- oh yeah Show I don't it? remember what it's called. The People but... versus OJ. Oh, okay, yeah, on Netflix. On Netflix, and they talked about his whole career. It was super interesting. Mm-hmm. He's a really good interviewer. I just loved it. So then I kind of went through. I watched. I listened to Jessica Biel, mm. Samantha B. Um, wait, you know. who's Samantha B? Samantha B. What? <laughs> Full frontal. She's like a late night, or oh, she's okay. got her own. She's a woman. Okay, with a late night talk show. I am Marin. out of touch. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Okay, these you're things. missing out. You need I'm to get on so that. I'm so glad I know you. Cause... Okay, well, Gosh. usually it's you telling me stuff. <laughs> so, and then I listened to the Matt LeBlanc one because, of, of course, you know, yeah. I love Friends. He was kind of a boring interview. Mm, okay, pick that one. He seemed to be like nah, not really wanting to share stuff. <laughs> Oh, and Jimmy Fallon. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's great. It was really good. You can just scroll good. through. There's like, I don't know, years worth of episodes. And you can just pick your favorite people and wow. listen. They're really good. Yep. So years. That's great. So. And so it was a good, it was a good interviewer. He's a good interviewer. He That's doesn't good. ask any personal questions. Okay. So. But he's just, it's very about the craft. Yeah. I like that. Me too. Because that's what, that's what actors want to talk about <laughs> yes yes and so they get excited about it yes okay the first episode was in 2015 so oh wow this has been going on a while we've got a lot to listen to a lot yeah anyway good great all right well thank you everybody for listening um you can find us on social media we're on facebook and instagram at homeschool unrefined we have a closed facebook group we'd love to have you join it's called unrefined homeschoolers can search for that and then answer the question and then we'll let you into the group um we also have a website homeschoolunrefined.com where you can find links to everything that we talked about and we will see you next week thanks for listening homeschool unrefined was created by marin gorse and angela sizer thanks to gambler's daughter for providing the music for our show you can find gambler's daughter at facebook.com slash gambler's daughter music